our kids responded. Uh, we did not um, uh, make shots early. I, we, we were pleased with some of the shots. I credit that to Illinois. Uh, and, but we went in, if we, if we hadn't messed up the last few seconds of the first half, uh, we, I think we would much felt much better going into halftime. And, uh, but at the same time, we came out and 13 down, 11 to go, and get a win. And we, we've been working on the last uh, three days really hard. What, what are we doing in the last eight minutes of the game? You know, what are we doing in those last eight minutes? Because we're taking some shots, we're making some defensive errors that you can't win type games. And uh, so we might be around 500 right now where the game was in balance with, with eight minutes to go. And uh, that's the right direction because we weren't certainly going into today's game. Open it up for questions. Coach, to your left, Chris. Obviously, Aubrey's performance and how that opens up things up for your offense. Yeah, I mean, that's huge for us to get guys who can make shots you like that. And, he, you know, with most freshmen, and I said on the air, it's most freshmen, it's not a matter of making shots, it's a matter of playing some defense early in their career. And why he continues to learn so much about defense, uh, we haven't been able to get him in there as much. Or just learn the nuances of some, some things we do offensively. So it's huge just to have another guy that can stretch the floor for us. Coach to the middle, Rod. John, you talked about swag earlier this week. Was there a point, given the occasion and everything else that was going on, that you felt like with Aubrey hitting those threes that these guys finally got their swag back and Karis is hitting some shots and Zach's hitting some? I, I love to see our kids when they're happy. And while well, I don't want them running all the way out at half court, to see the freshmen, that freshman group is really tight. And to see the freshmen surrounding their teammates, it just pumps everybody up. It gives everybody so much confidence. Coach, first row to the right, Andy. You saw those shots fall from Aubrey, but then you also saw um, the, the three kind of open up the, the window for Doyle there in the middle. How nice is it to see some of these young guys kind of understanding those concepts and starting to really kind of, you know, get those things going? And I, I mentioned this to my assistant coaches, but I think one of the most gratifying things is many of the baskets down the stretch were scored by Ricky and Aubrey in those last 10 minutes of the game. Um, and it, I think Harris got one. I think well, Zach got a couple earlier. But it was just big to just have the freshmen be able to say, oh, this is, you know, we always talk about outliers on our team. We all know that Spike and, and their freshman year and Zach have been outliers where they're coming off the bench and they're just keen to win. Um, so it's, it's big to have Ricky's already been one in the Syracuse game. For Aubrey today, this is big. And it gives, it's good for Aubrey. It's really good for Muhammad. It's good for Cam. If they look at this and they say, that could be me next time. And that's why we practice extra with the young guys. Coach, third row to the right. Coach, your message to the team down by 13 in the second half. Well, I, I you know, at that time, you're, you're in timeouts, and we're, we're just trying to keep everybody calm and move on to the next play. Uh, you know, we, we just we, we, we put Aubrey in because we just said, we got to get another guy to shoot the ball in. Derek was not having a great day. He was 0 for 8 or 0 for 7 or something like that. And we said, let's just get another shooter on the floor that feels good about his shooting. And because uh, uh, Aubrey's first two shots in the first half looked down. They were down. We had a lot. Of, we missed three or four layups. We missed four foul shots in a row. And we missed some really good looking shots that went in and out. So we, I, I wasn't like, hey, we're not playing hard enough. We're not playing smart enough. We had one turnover. Just <coughs> keep playing, pressing on, sing, hit singles two by two. Coach, back to your right, Brendan. In the second half, there was zone looks that you were putting their way. How much? Um, right now is the zone just, you know, kind of a stopgap versus kind of being a weapon? If you know. Well, we're working to be, have our defense be weapons in several areas, but it takes so much time, whether it was a two zone, a three zone, just to get everybody. We missed two or three slides in that thing, and they were just giving up open shots. At other times, it really helped us. John has tremendous plays coming out of timeouts. So he's down up a man-to-man -man play most of the time, so we try to change that up as much. But it would be good if we can be really confident about playing multiple defenses at time with this particular team. It's really hard with a young team. Coach, uh, just one more. We might get to pass back here. We'll bring it to the front row. John to your left. Bear with us. We only have one working mic today. Well, it's a, a typical Tuesday afternoon in Michigan. I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> saying to these guys in the huddle at that point? That's what I just mentioned. It was just, there was nothing big. All right, here's the next play. Here's what they're doing offensively. Two by two, we're going to back at this thing. You can't, you can't get them to score 13 points in the next minute. Just hang in there. And it's all we needed to make. You know, I, I'm looking at the scoreboard. It's 13, and we make two in a row. 
and uh, and all of a sudden it's a seven point game, and I said, all right, now we can play. So it's it was it's just big for us to to uh, to see that success, all the hard work, because these guys really worked hard, pay off, even before the uh, in the week of exams, uh, be, or before the Coppin game, the SMU game, we were making progress uh, during that week, but. Just to see them pay off, it's it's what you need to have another good practice because they saw it right in front of their eyes. Coach, right in front, Jake. Coach, you mentioned outliers, uh, Aubrey tonight. Max had one earlier. What is it about those guys off the bench that they are, they come off they come off and they shoot a few in a row as opposed to just one in this game, one a couple games later? Well, I think that you have to have having guys that come off the bench and make shots is really difficult to do. Um, very few young men can do that. They, they just think about it. They've been starting their whole life. They got a usual warm up. Now all of a sudden, hey, get in there, Aubrey. And he's handed the ball. He's open. He sat there. For, it, it's difficult. Few people can do it really well. And that was very encouraging for Aubrey today. So I think you'll see him in that role more often going forward. Coach, right in front is Mark. Yeah, John, we saw a picture of you uh, slapping hands with, with Harbaugh in the tunnel there. I mean, what was? And it's a game day, but did you have any interaction with him today? Kind of. No, I, no, I did not. You know, I think if it would have been timed up, if they had obviously that was a priority to, to our right. and my, our pregame was a priority over that. Right, sure. Probably the only, I, our team was probably the only one that had that priority. But uh, we went to our pregame walkthrough, etc. Uh, but just saw him. I met him when we were in uh, uh, California two summers ago, and we're sitting there talking. What I do remember it was it occurred to me, both of us. He just been to the Super Bowl. And lost a tough game. We just been to the national championship and lost a tough game. How many times do you ever think either of us get there or stand there talking? And so I think we have a, a, a relationship that will grow. I really pride myself in really trying to get to know all the coaches here. I, I mean, is that something that, that you were watching this whole process and you're like, oh, that's the one guy I know actually in this whole thing? Well, um, yeah, you know, his name was certainly bannered around a little bit. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, it, it was—it's just good. And, and I trust everybody that's been in this search uh, that they know what they're doing. They know what's best for Michigan football. And uh, from what I understand, this is a great hire. I hate to see uh, Brady leave, but at the same time, uh, we—that's part of this business. A tough part of this business. And uh, it's, Jim is now ready to go, and I look forward to get, really getting to know him and his family even more going forward. We've got time for a few more. Back to Rod in the middle. John, how big is this win in terms of momentum and what you've preached about building and building and, and trying to build one block on top of the other, but now that they're seeing some fruits of that labor that they can see a, a conference win to come from all of this? Well, I, you know, based on now this is my eighth season in the Big Ten, I know how difficult it is to win on the road. And now you, 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 if you don't win a home game like that, uh, it's going to be very difficult going forward. So, I, I, as I mentioned before, I think the big thing is it gives us so much bounce in our step for practice, to have great practices uh, that we can just grow every single time. Now, you grow in, 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 in both times. You grow in both victory and defeat. But there's this um, the confidence that you need is, is really huge, and I think we got a big dose of it today. Coach, just here, right here in the front. Can you talk about exploiting Egu's foul troubles and getting the ball to Ricky late? Yeah, I mean, that's something that I've, we've really tried to work on. When we see a guy that does get in foul trouble, he's a key. I mean, he's been there. We've been playing against him for, it seems like, 10 years. So it was really good to try and get him out of there. You know, they have only one freshman that's out in that lineup, and, and he's a good, really good player. He was great in the first half. But as, it's important if you can get that other big guy out of there because he does protect the rim better than anybody that they have. Coach, final question to Morris here. Back. Uh, Coach, you guys had a lot of success using the 2-3 zone today against Illinois. Is that something you're going to make a bigger part of the game plan and carry into the rest of the season? Well, I, I, as I mentioned before, I think all these zone defenses that you'll see us play, um, are, are, are they just a way of, of just uh, disguising things? Are there, are there things that were out of foul trouble? I think we have to have multiple defenses with this team because we're just, uh, we have so many great one-on-one -on -one teams in this league that can really just take you, get to the foul line. When, when we used the zone, it was when they got to that 16 foul. That's when we use it the most because Rice is so good, five or six foul shots a game, and they're going to win a foul shot <coughs> contest uh, with those veterans. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Coach.